Hello, welcome to the Roy Rogers News Channel. Thank you for watching. All right, and before we jump into our headline video, I just want to say that the couple that let me use this house, well, they're actually here. So let's go ahead and talk to the businessman here. I leave on a business trip again tomorrow. I think of myself as a role model for business people. All right, and how about you? There are a lot of people in the world and there are just as many different characteristics and ideas. I think I'd be really happy if I could meet a lot of people and see the differences for myself. All right. And on that note, let's go ahead and jump into our headline coverage. All right, the champion Mike has received a promotion from Junior Game Master to Game Master. Congratulations. All right, I enjoy watching the champion Mike host these tournaments. And some of these tournaments have uh, really interesting names. <laughs> uh, will you go to prom with me is, is a prominent example that I could think of. And Mike, I'm going to wish you well on your in-game endeavors. All right. And I'm going to go rather quickly because we have a lot of stuff on our table here. So I want to jump into, into our headlines right away and try to make this video as short as I can. Okay. Cole has left the staff lounge. My suspicion is probably real life. Real life is a very intense topic. And... I know it's a cliche that I keep saying in my headline videos that this staff member left because of real life, this staff member le I mean, real life has an impact in the game. And depending on your real life schedule, it could mean that it chops hours, minutes, or even an entire day of playing Pokemon. And as for Cole, I do have to say that on his part, he has been a really great philanthropist in game. I remember back when he led a team called Fire, and he used to give uh, water bottles to newer players. No, I'm not kidding. He literally gave fresh waters to newer players and then they came into his team, which, which I think is very nice. And I do try to engage in a little bit of some philanthropy of my own. In fact, one of these headlines might make me a little bit more active in that department. So I'm going to get to that in a moment, but I just want to say that I appreciate Cole for being such a wonderful example of how to be such a wonderful person on Pokemon. So. Cole, keep up the good work, and uh, I wish you well in your endeavors. I wish you well in your endeavors. All right, our next headline, Ronix has left the staff lounge. All right, real life as well. I, uh, I don't know anything about what happens behind closed doors, but I suspect that Ronix left because of real life. It's just uh, a gut of mine. And I do think that well, Ronix has left because of that. Uh, well, because of that one reason. So, Ronix has led a team called One Hit KO. And I think this was back when he was a community manager, if I remember correctly. I don't know if he engaged in a lot of philanthropy like, like Cole did, but... I think he was trying to dip his toes into the competitive market, if you will. And Ronix probably was going through some difficulties. And some people may think, you know what, ultimately I have to pay the bills. And I can't really contribute much to this game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe dedicate less of my time on PokeMO and maybe more time on trying to figure out ways how to earn extra money. Life is a very difficult topic and I could describe it in great length, 
but this is the Roy Rogers News Channel. I don't want to turn this into the Roy Rogers Life Channel, but Ronix, I wish you well in your endeavors. Good luck. And Dylan has received a promotion from Community Manager to Global Moderator. Congratulations! Dylan! Probably one of the most interesting men to go into the Staff Lounge, uh, because he, I mean, Node has also been a co-host of mine, but Dylan was actually one of the first co-hosts of mine to ever co-star with me in my own walkthrough. If you want, I can post a link down in the description below of the episode that he starred in, but we <laughs> we found a glitch together in uh, uh, in Shell Cave downstairs in the basement. I remember I remember that, Gillen. I remember that moment almost like it was yesterday. Uh, and uh, both of us were just kind of like entertained. You know, we were kind of like it was almost like like a party down there in the on the ice and I said so. There you go. So feel, feel free to, uh, to to skip down there, but it was it was really uh, <laughs> it was really kind of <laughs> it was really kind of funny. But at the same time, though, Gillen has also hosted some wonderful tournaments. In fact, just today he hosted a Sandal tournament. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it, but I do have the results of that said tournament in my headline feed. One more thing before before I leave. I have to comment on this. Gillen, I'm looking at your forms avatar, and there is a rocket heading for your back. I don't know if that's a rocket or not. It looks like a rocket. Gillen, duck, hide, run. Don't let that rocket hit your back. You're too valuable to this game. Good luck, Gillen. I wish you well in your endeavor. Uh, in game. All right, and let's go ahead and talk about this headline, the new mayor of Pokemo Best Friends. Okay, so there was a mayor election, and I was on the ballot, thanks to Eggplant. And Fred was a really wonderful moderator, and he was fair, and he treated both candidates equally. I was one of the candidates, and the other man was another candidate. He treated both of us equally, and I really appreciate his fairness in this moderation process. So, since I'm not only a YouTuber, but now since I'm the the official mayor of Poke MMO, so what sort of direction do I want to go? Well, let me go ahead and and present you my direction. Okay, me, but first I I have to appoint people to certain positions, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that in a moment. First, I'm gonna have to read my entire mayor. I guess you can say uh, inauguration post. All right. So, good evening, everyone. This race was quite intense, but I am glad that the good people on PokeMO has trust for me becoming mayor. As mayor of PokeMO, I would like to do what I can to unite the community. Let's start off with some appointments. Alright, so... Vice Mayors? Blue Jim, Jerry Zoo, X Sparky, and Kramer. Representatives? K9XL and the champion Mike, and competitive representatives Nick Hillar and Daryl Dixon, and Forfeiter retired his competitive rep position, so he recommended to me that I should give the position to Daryl, and I was more than happy to give it to him. All right, and I'm going to get into the direction that I want to take in a moment. But first I have to read the second portion of this inaugural address. I would like to make a brief speech, not really too long, but I want to make it as substantive as possible. All right, quote, I am going to thank Eggplant for putting me on the ballot for mayor. Fred Rich 
Nitsi has been a fair moderator for this mayor election. So I appreciate his objectiveness. Even if I'm mayor of Pokemon, I would like to not brag about it. Maybe I could mention it in an upcoming headline video, but in a thankful way. As CEO and founder of Roy Rogers Incorporated, my goal was to contribute to Pokemon without turning a real life profit. I would like to do what I can to be of assistance, like evolving a ton of haunters, gravelers, etc. Since I am now mayor, I would like to contribute to the community in a big way. I don't care if you're a newer player who came on Pokemon today or if you're a well established player. We should all come together as fellow Pokemon players. I wish everyone well in their Pokemon endeavors, and I would like to wish everyone a nice day, afternoon, or evening. Best friends. Okay, so now let me go ahead and talk about the, the direction that I want to take this. Uh, in the quote, I say, I would like to contribute to the community in a big way. That gives a little bit of a hint what I'm planning to do. So let me tell you my full scope and what to expect from a mayor best friend. I would like to tackle head on certain troubles that newer players may have on Pokemo and possible solutions for those problems. Starting on Tuesday or Wednesday, I was having a brief meeting with vice mayors, with my vice mayors over on uh, Discord under the, the text and uh, Jerry Zoo and I have been discussing at great lengths of what approach could be taken to stent the pop the, the poverty percentages on Pokemo. And I'm gonna be very honest here, the poverty percentage rate on Pokemo is very, very low. I mean there are so many ways to make money in game, but I want to slash those numbers even lower if I can. Because as mayor of Pokemo, I want to do what I can to give Pokemo a friendly face. Some people may perceive the mayor of Pokemo as the face of Pokemo. So I want to do everything on my part to present Pokemo in the best possible light. And one of the issues that I would like to confront is poverty and how to solve it. Now, there is a disclaimer here. I don't want to give handouts. Whenever I mean handouts, I mean I'm not doing my job as a mayor properly if I'm giving people 100k. That doesn't do anything. I want to give people the vehicle to stop poverty. So I may not give 100k, but I may give a Meowth perhaps with payday and on a personal level I encouraged a player who completed the Unova storyline to get a Pokemon with payday and he took my advice and now I just talked to him uh, last night because my Sabbath is, is over at night so I was able to chat with him on Discord. And he told me that thanks to my suggestion, his cat is at level 100. He has 500k now. And whenever I heard that, it made me smile. And it made me think to myself, I think I'm going in the right direction with this. So I would like to officially state my idea here on my headline video. I would like to have a certain day where it's a Meowth distribution day. And Meowth could be a way that you can get out of poverty. And I think that the Meowth way is a lot more satisfying, a lot nicer. And there's a lot of preferences. For example, you could have evolved your Meowth into Persian, or you can level Meowth to level 100, not evolving it, and have the ability to pick up, which means to pick up random items like Great Balls and 
deeds and all that good stuff. So uh, it's really your preference, but I would like to have a day when me and my fellow vice mayors can go out and distribute meows to people who say that they're impoverished. And, and I really want to encourage people to generate money in game so that way the person that I'm helping can feel a lot more satisfied. If you work for the money in game, ultimately you're going to feel very satisfied. And it's a very nice feeling. I'm not too sure when I'm going to incorporate this idea, but I do plan to incorporate it in the near future. Once at least one person in my team is available to help me with this quest. Because I cannot do it alone. I'm only one person. I hope to be able to help people get out of their impoverished situations. And again, I do have to emphasize the poverty level on PokeMO is low. Very, very low. But I want to make those numbers even lower, if possible. Uh, and as of right now, that's, uh, that's kind of my, my priority right now. I, I, I could tackle some issues later on as mayor, but for now, I want to kind of make a dent in the poverty percentages on PokeMO. Because the poverty percentage is very, very low, but I just want to make it even lower than, than it is already. So you have a little taste of my mayorship. Let's go ahead and jump into the tournaments. Yu Yu, stop dogging me! Who won? Hosted by Bilbert, Thursday, 4th of January. Congratulations to Lifestyle for first place, Orange Maniac for second place, Mandra66, and X Sparky for sharing third place. Congratulations. Doubles, I am over the moon, Friday, 5th of January. Who won? Congratulations to Orange Maniac for first place, Aran for second place, and Gua Guancho Power and Jenna Kula for sharing third place. Congratulations. Doubles, I, I'm in pure bliss. Saturday, 6th of January. Who won? Congratulations to I, Julian for first place, Dr. PJB for second place, E is, and Samuel Wilson for sharing third place. Congratulations. Oh, you, all you can eat buffet. Monday, 8th of January. Who won? Congratulations to Orange Maniac for first place, I, Julian for second place, and K Kara Fira and Zico Dark for sharing third place. Congratulations. OU, come out of your shell. The Friday, 12th of January. Who won? Hosted by Bilbo. Congratulations to Stairway for first place, Blue Breath for second place, Enchantor and I, Julian for sharing third place. Congratulations. Yu Yu, do you remember me? Saturday, 13th of January. Nice name, K9XL. And that that crocodile looks very, very scary. Who won? Congratulations to Blue Breath for first place, Valinor for second place, and Giant Pipe and Predakiller for sharing third place. Congratulations. OU, a re-unique tournament. Friday, January 19th. Who won? Congratulations to Poker Riley for first place. Giant Pipe for second place. Uh, st st Steelen and Boy Cad for sharing third place. Congratulations. As well as honorable mentions to Blue Breath, Punk Nerd, Matthew MLG, and J Wax. Yu Yu, that's a crafty one. Saturday, 20th of January. Who won? Congratulations to Enchantor for first place. Rakudu for second place. And. ZD Fire and La or Carolick for sharing third place. Congratulations. Oh, you. It's looming over Sunday, 21st of January. Who won? Hosted by Bilber. Congratulations to Mandra66 for first place, J How Crazy for second place, and Dark Qualifier and Steelin for sharing third place. Congratulations. You, you. Cough Egregious is. Tomb Showdown, Wednesday, 24th of January. Who won? Congratulations to Yorsa Yorka for first place, Scrunchy for second place, and Lee Jovi and Chessfit for sharing third place. Mwahaha! <laughs> Congratulations. I had to do that because Coffee Green just is a, is a coffin. So, there we go. Okay, the champion might decide to be a little spooky. 
Uh, team tournament January, Saturday 27th. All right, who won? Congratulations to Rise for first place and Nor for second place. Congratulations as well as honorable mentions to Node, the champion Mike, and Gillen for assisting Barminator in hosting this tournament. Oh, you rock you like a hurricane! February 2nd through February 3rd. Uh, all right. Exilo Curver probably had his coffee this morning. All right. Who won? Congratulations, too. Uh, nice picture there. Congratulations, too. Uh, Enchantor for first place, Lorezo for second place, and Mandra66 and Ep Epic Verde for sharing third place. Congratulations. Oh, you, the Great Wall of Thorns, Saturday 3rd of February. Who won? Congratulations to Sunjay Support for first place, Epic Verde for second place, and Orange Maniac and Raka Udu for sharing third place. Congratulations. Mm, a Mammoth Tournament OU Friday 9th of February. Who won? Congratulations to Tata U for first place, Zico Dark for second place, and Double J and Lewis Anderson for sharing third place. Congratulations. You, you. So, will you go to prom with me now? Fifth, uh, no, number five. Now, number five. Saturday, tenth of February. Who won? Congratulations to Kampa C. Pi. I think I said that correctly. S Kaya Sim Simpi Simpi. All right, yeah, Bill. L to the power of 12 and Belber Boy for first place as well as runner ups. Dragon is a um, star? Rick Dian and XXX Dragon Dark XXX. Okay. What an interesting way to, to be introduced. Oh, you Gillen Sandow Tournament. Who won? Hosted by Gillen. Congratulations to Pun Free since 2017. Congratulations to Aran for first place, Blue Breath for second place, and GB Whedon XXX Dragon Dark XXX for sharing third place. Congratulations. All right, let's go ahead and jump into our developer announcements. I had to move around in game a little bit because I didn't want to go AFK. Okay. So, a lot of people in the community, I have to introduce some. Um, this comment first. So, the thread that Q commented on, someone asked about the shiny rates. Rather, if the shiny rates had a certain skew or a certain bias towards certain people, and Q is answering that concern. So, there we go. All right, so here is Q's answer. We modified the odds based on two factors right now. Anti-cheat, which reduces your rate, and donor status, which increases it. The anti-cheat metrics don't apply to the vast majority of players, and they are temporary in-game. There is no permanent cursing of odds, and odds are not modified based upon simple things like how many encounters you do in-game. It's an automatic process testing for third-party software, which is botting on the player's behalf. All right, bullet point number one. Some things like scripted events have a zero chance of to be shiny. This encompasses gifts, scripted events, and custom species like elf bots. Each player has the same base rate, which we modify against. This hasn't been changed in a while, but currently, but it is currently 1 out of 30k. And we probably won't change it again. This results in about a 0.005% to a 0.01% of the player base encountering shinies every day. There is no specific modifications done per species or anything. So everything has the same chance of at being shiny. As a reminder, shiny hunting is a gamble. There is no promise of a reward, and there is no win condition.
to be satisfied, which will make you win. It is not likely, but you can definitely roll the dice infinitely and come up with nothing. Or you could get a shiny uh, on your first encounter, because that's how independent odds work. You have the same odds on your first uh, compared to your 100,000th wild encounter, provided you don't get dinged with anti-cheat or you didn't turn on donor status. Increasing the amount of encounters you do via hordes will give you more opportunities to win, but you never have a 100% chance to win. The only guaranteed shinies come from official event rewards like PvP. Alright, so let me go ahead and, and talk about the independence probability theory that Q is referring to. In probable theory, two events are independent, statistically independent, or sophistically independent. If the occurrence of one does not affect the probability of an occurrence of the other, similarly, two random variables are independent if the realization of one does not affect the probability distribution of the other. The, the, the concept of independence extends to dealing with collections of more than two ra random variables, in which case the events are pairwise independent. If each pair are independent of each other, and the events are, are mutually independent, if each event is independent of each other combination of events. Alright. So, then there are people in the community that, that uh, decided to ask Q some questions about the shiny rate. Panchama asks, however, it is just not possible that somehow the rate is glitched in some cases? Q answers this, this concern by, by stating the following. No, it's either broken for everybody or it's broken for nobody. The system is inherently unfair due to random odds isn't broken. All right. Canine XL asks, does this mean hordes are considered one encounter at five out of 30,000? So you could, can never encounter two shinies per horde? Q answers this concern by saying the following. For the context of this discussion, I'm referring to it as one encounter. If he encounters 20,000 encounters and 40,000 hordes, there is still only a 660% variance from the average of 1 out of 6,000. So it is not very outrageous considering players can and have encountered at Route 1 on their playthroughs. But his comment was ambiguous, and I do not know what he means. Let's go ahead and talk about this a little bit, because I know that some people may be trying to absorb this. So what Q is trying to say here is that shiny rates are not biased. Shiny rates are fair all across the board. However, there's two factors one that increases your rate and the other one that decreases your rate. The one that increases your rate is the chance or if you buy donor status that increases your rate. If you get dinged for cheating or for botting in game then your rate goes down. And those are the two factors that affect your shiny rating. So as long as you're not a cheater, you should be fine. And if you have a little bit of some extra money, maybe you can maybe you can buy some donor status and use it for, for that purpose. But I should I should say that donor status has purposes that are less famous, like egg hatching times are a lot faster, and XP yield is a lot more than without donor status. So. There are multiple benefits of donor status, but the shiny rate is probably one of the biggest 
benefits to donor status. All right, so let's go ahead and, and address another concern by Dr. Butler. All right, Dr. Butler asks a completely different topic. So currently the cheapest PP ups on GTL are at 47K, which I think it's somewhat problematic. Considering even a full gym run, including all three regions, doesn't allow you to PP max a comp. I also think that maxing PPs on a poke shouldn't cost more than breeding it, which is just an opinion. But paying 140k per, per move and 560k to max is just uh, FRKN absurd. Yes. It would lower the income for people who plant berries to craft those PP ups, but come on, those prices are ridiculous right now. So since choice items, orb, and so on are important to PvP and could also be grinded through playing uh, matchmaking or MM, can we have the same option with PP ups? Cheers. And Q responds to Dr. Butler's concern by stating the following. Quote, These are being halved in price in the next update, as they're out of proportion to the other permanent buffs, like rare candies currently. If after that change settles at live, and we still see issues with the market, we'll consider a BP source alternative for them. But I think the majority of issues at the moment are due to the farming annoyances of Unova, lack of hotkeys for plant management, and the disproportionate berry requirements for these items. All right. So Q has a solution that he would like to try out in the next update to see if it lowers down the prices of PP ups and yeah so see if it lowers down pp ups if it doesn't lower down the, the, the price of pp ups then then q is going to consider a bp alternative or bp stands for battle points so if you go to the to the battle frontier and if you battle a lot or if you do matchmaking and uh if if you win then there are chances that you may be able to pull off getting the battle points. You, you may be able to pull off receiving PP ups via a battle point alternative. So, so there we go. All right, we're gonna have to stay tuned to to what might happen with PPs. So we're gonna have to stay tuned to what what's gonna happen to PP ups. All right, so Zygoman asks, Q, any rough ETA for move ability item progress? Q responds to this concern by, by this following statement. Quote, no, sorry, circumstances ended up dictating that we work on multi-factor authorization for account security throughout January. So we dumped a lot of time into that. At the moment, we're working on some things related to breeding balances to help alleviate the burden of comp creation for edge cases like genderless species, but there has been minimal work done to items, moves, and abilities. Of note, gems, but I don't think anyone plays with gems anymore. We're waiting on some complex animation things to be finished though. So. I don't know how much time we have until the next patch, or what may be completed by then. All right, and then Red Spawn says, "Thanks for trying to provide us more security." Out of curiosity, any factor? Uh, thank you, uh, Red Spawn. This is the following. Thanks for trying to provide us with more security. Out of curiosity though, any chance of a two-factor authorization will be in the security update? Q 
queue responds to this concern by by the following statement quote the initial implementation of MFA is already complete and will be based on device authorization and email confirmation see how GW2 manages this issue this will be the default for all accounts and should provide suspicious sorry, and should prevent suspicious logins from succeeding in most in most case scenarios this will be the default for all accounts and should prevent suspicious logins from succeeding in most scenarios we'll be looking to add mobile authenticators like Google Authentication, we are we are, we will be looking at will be looking to add multiple will be looking to add mobile authenticators like Google Authenticator later on this year. And then Ridspawn also asks, quote, also no chance you could do at least try to rush some moves and abilities that could really help us i.e. defiant ability sheer force and moves like wide guard and quick guard and then Q Q addresses this concern by by the following quote I am not sure we can but we will try to stuff as much pos as possible. I'm not sure if we can. I'm not sure we can, but we will try to stuff as much as possible into it. We still have some other complex things to do, like Unova's rematchable trainers and some deeper breeding challenges in the quota. All right. So, a lot of stuff that's that we have to kind of absorb here uh, with from, from the development team and and uh, and also you get to know what, what 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 my plans are as mayor of Poke ML so or at least at least you know the overall direction of the of mayor best friends so I'm glad to uh, to let you all in on the direction and on that note let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and close the book to this. Let's go ahead and close the chapter. Let's go ahead and close the book on this chapter. Sorry. Let's go ahead and close out this video. Anyways, this is the World Rogers News Channel. Don't forget to comment or subscribe to my channel. Like or dislike the content that you see here. And this is the Roy Rogers News Channel signing off. Fast, accurate, Unbiased, Roy Rogers News.